So where did the first atom come from? From stuff, where did the stars? You're gonna see the pattern here. Impossible. Impossible, because you need something to make something, don't you? Absolutely. Someone that I like it. All right, well, there's plenty of witnesses for Prophet Muhammad, or plenty of witnesses for um, Krishna, or Buddha, or any of these people. How do you know who to believe in? Because none of them came back from the dead. So a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I went to go to visit Ludd's Church. It's a little valley in Buxton where the followers of John Wycliffe, the Loddards, they used to worship when they were being heavily persecuted by the Catholic Church under fear of death. A very, very brave people. It really makes us look pathetic when we don't speak out about issues today. But either way, we were on our way and my wife managed to forget to turn off her straighteners now all seemed very stressful and annoying at the time but it was not it was god's plan so i went back in i uh, i went to turn off the straighteners for her and god put on my heart to pick up the video camera let's go talk to some people today so we did and we went up to Ludd's church and we spoke to three different people the first was paul a wonderful public figure uh, the second was dragos what an amazing name dragos and the third were a pair of astrophysicists called Isabel and Akil. Each conversation was very, very different in all sorts of awesome ways. And I thank God for them. And, um, well, have a look for yourselves. Fantastic. Mr. Paul, here is a book. In normal circumstances, I would pass you this book, but under social distancing regulations, I won't. This is. Do you remember this? Yeah, of course. Excellent. So... See this book with its, with its pages, with its sentence structure, with its front cover, back cover, all the congregation between, between everything in it, you know, yeah. the design to it. If I told you that made itself from nothing, with no external influence, what would you say to me? Say would you say that was pop? Wouldn't, wouldn't believe you. Wouldn't believe me. It, made, made, it, happened, it happened by random. Yeah, not, not even over time. Yeah, I'm not having it. Excellent, excellent, okay. Now, scientists call DNA the book of life. See the connection there? Okay. And they tried to tell us that that came from nothing with no external influence. What's your name, sorry? Dragos. Dragos. Love, what a wonderful name. Would you say it's possible or impossible for this book, with all its structure and its colour and sentences and text and all that, to make itself from nothing? Is that possible or impossible? Uh, I would say impossible. Impossible. Because you need something to make something, don't you? Absolutely. Someone. Someone, I like it, I like it. Scientists call DNA the book of life. Okay. Now, this is a children's book. Yeah. Obviously infinitely less complex mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. DNA itself. What do, you, what do you think of that? That they say DNA made itself with no external influence? Mm, that's a toughie. Interesting, I don't know, isn't it? I don't know what to say. Well, basically, mm. I personally believe in God. Ooh. Somewhere or another. So, okay. Um, Okay. I don't know, there must have been something that created everything, right? Now, do you believe that it is possible for this book to have made itself from nothing with no external influence? No. No, it's impossible. Isn't it? You need something to make something, don't we? Mm. Scientists call DNA the book of life, and we're told that came from nothing with no external influence. What does that make you think? It's quite interesting. It's an interesting yeah. one, isn't it? Now that's strange enough as it is, but hold that thought. Do you remember an animal called Dolly the sheep? Yeah. She got she got cloned about 30, 40 yeah. years ago, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Now we can apply that same technology and we can clone a human being. If I cloned Paul, would your clone have your soul? Listen, I heard something quite recently that was really interesting. Ooh, go on. That a Greek philosopher wrote first time a baby cries is the moment that its soul enters its body, so no, no in that case. No, excellent, excellent. So we're going to argue the soul's immaterial. Okay. So if your soul's immaterial, where's it going to go when you die? Oh, goodness only knows. Goodness only knows, I like that. That's a humble mindset. So I'm going to skip the questions that I normally do with you because most people are very secular and they believe that, <laughs> they believe that the human eye made itself, which is utterly ridiculous, isn't it? Do you know who Dolly the sheep is? Yes, I do. Excellent, I'm yeah. glad. I'm, are they still teaching that? 
no, I think my mum told me about it. Your mum's fantastic. Yeah. So Dolly the sheep, as you know, sheep got cloned about 30 years ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. Now, we could use that same technology, Isabel, and clone you. Would your clone have your soul? What, what would you call a soul though? I'll let you answer that. It's, it would be different, it would be difficult because it would be, assuming that you would put, clone me, put me in a, another mummy, you know. And then oh I no, you'd on. still be here. I'd still be here. You'd still be here. There'd be another Isabel here. What was your name, oh. bud? Akil. Akil, so we've got two Isabels here. Yeah. Would the one that we've just cloned have her soul? No, I mean, so you mean by soul, you mean like consciousness and, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So we can agree the soul's immaterial. Can't clone that in cells. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, I like that. <laughs> so where's your soul going to go when you die? Where is it at the moment? You, you just answered. Well, it's in your brain, isn't it? Okay. Would it, would it not be like your memories and everything that's been made to build you is in your brain? And that's what makes you. So Isabel 2.0 That's <laughs> going to have different experiences, different things that make yeah. her her. So she won't be me, but she'll be, she'll look like me. She might sound like me, she'll yeah. have the same health problems as me, hey, you know. But, I can empathise with that. You know, so it's a bit like when, when you're living and your brain's going and mm. you know, you're making all of these experiences, it's all stored in your brain. So when you die, yeah. it doesn't necessarily go anywhere, but your brain just stops functioning. That's really interesting. Can I pose a question to you? Okay, yeah. So one of my best mates, I asked him, because he's, he's got a long-term partner and he's and I asked him if God forbid, you know, had a horrendous car accident, permanent brain damage, was on a bed, lost a memory, no chance of ever recovering, would you pull the plug on her? And he said, yes, I would, because that's no longer because he believed that all she was was memories and what was in her brain. But Akil just conceded to me that he believed your clone wouldn't be you. Therefore, it can't just be what's in your brain. It can't just be your memories. Let's move this on to morality. Do you think you're a good person? I think I've got good in me. I like I've that. I've got bad in me too. Me too. Would you mind if I tested that? And I'll test myself yeah, too okay. as we go. So the first question is, have you ever told a lie? Yes. Me too. What does that make us? Liars. Liars, absolutely. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small? Me too. So we're both... Thieves. Lying thieves. <laughs> have you ever looked at a woman with lust? <laughs> Absolutely, me too. You know, Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Have you had sex before or outside of marriage? Yeah. Me too. So we're both fornicators as well, so I'm not judging you, Paul. <laughs> but you've just conceded to me that you're a fornicator, a thief, a liar, and a blasphemer. I'm away. This is great. <laughs> so when we meet God the day we die, are we going to be innocent or guilty? Guilty. We're going to be guilty. Where are we going to go? Hell. Hell. If you believe in that. Absolutely. So what did God do to save guilty sinners like you and me? He sent his son. He sent his son, absolutely. Do you understand the legal repercussions of that? Legal. So, the reason Jesus did that for us was because we can never atone for our sins. In a court of law, if you went to the judge, listen, I robbed a bank, shot the guard, murdered him, took all the money, but I also give to charity and I do good deeds. Do you think the judge is going to judge you on the good you do or the bad you do? Yeah, good judge would weigh the both in the balance, wouldn't he? Would he? Or would yeah, he just say so. you're going away for murder? Sorry, I missed the murder part. Have <laughs> you ever told a lie? Yeah, of course. Me too. What does that make us? Liars. Liars. Absolutely, we're both liars. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small? Yeah, I stole once from my dad. Oh, no. Oh, that's very <laughs> honest. I'm liking it. Yeah, I've stolen too. So what are we? Thieves. Lying thieves. Have you ever, <laughs> have you ever looked at a woman with lust? Yeah, of course I do. Me too. And Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you've already committed adultery in your heart. Have you ever had sex outside of marriage? Yeah, me too. So we're both fornicators as well. So Drago, I ain't judging you, but we're both lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterers at heart so we're not and fornicators. People. So when God judges us the day we die, we're going to be innocent or guilty? Probably innocent. I'd say innocent. According to those commandments, are we going to be innocent or guilty? According to those, if you keep us strict like that, it's probably not. Absolutely. Probably not. We're both guilty. So where would we go? Hell? Absolutely. What did God do so that people like you and me wouldn't have to go to hell? He created, uh, I don't know. What sacrifice did he make about 2,000 years ago? Jesus. Jesus, absolutely. Do you understand the legal implications of that? If you he, if he detail more. So he was a sinless man, yeah. zero sins. Yeah. 
because he was sacrificed for us, he took the payment for our sins. If you're in front of a judge, 90, you were doing 90 miles an hour down a 30 road and you had a, a stack of fines against you and someone came and paid your bail, you wouldn't be prosecuted, would you? They've paid your fine for you, mm -hmm. therefore you don't face the repercussion. He paid your fine for you because you can't possibly do it on your own good works. No one's sinless. Everyone I talked to said, yeah, I've stolen, yeah, I've lied. Yeah. We're wretched people. Yeah, well, just... That makes sense. That makes sense. So, okay, I like it. Do you mind if we step this up a bit over here? So we're going to move on to the realms of morality. So Isabel, do you think you're a good person? I like to think I'm a good person, yeah. Excellent. That, that <laughs> seems to be a very common answer today. I like it. I'll tell you what, do you mind if I test that? And I'll test myself at the same time. You ever told a lie, Isabel? Yes. Me too. What does that make us? Lies, absolutely. Have you ever stolen something, even if it's small, like a song or an album? Yeah. Yeah, me too, so what about you? Um, thieves. Lying thieves, excellent. Have you ever looked with lust? Yeah. Yeah, me too. As you said, if you look at someone with lust, you've committed adultery in your heart. Have you had sex outside of marriage? Yes. Yeah. Me too, so what does that make us? Fornicators. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, so I'm not judging you, Isabel. But, but you said wait that. a minute, wait a minute. Okay. But we're both lying, thieving, blasphemous, fornicators. God, the day we die, whether we believe in him or not. Now, would you agree that objective truth is more important than what we believe? So, for example, if I only had 20 quid in my wallet and I told you I was a millionaire, I wouldn't be a millionaire, would I? I'd only have 20 to my name. Okay, yeah, yeah. The objective truth is what's more important. Do you agree with that? Truth isn't relative. Just because Leanne believes something and I believe something different doesn't make it true. It's what's actually true. Yeah. Isn't it? Absolutely. Now, you conceded to me earlier the boot couldn't make itself. The human body is infinitely more complex than this children's book and didn't make itself either. It was made by God. Now, you're going to face him the day you yeah. die, whether you believe in him or not, because, as you conceded, objective truth is more important than relative truth. So, does the fact that you be guilty according to those commandments concern you? No. How come? Because they're... they're... Like you said, if I've stolen a pen, maybe from my sister or something like that, that's not something, I'm, I haven't gone and murdered someone. I think there's a difference between stealing a pen from someone and doing something really, really bad. Does that make sense? No, I see, I see what you're saying. I, I, I like to think I lead quite a good life. I don't necessarily agree with everything that you're saying. But, um, you know. No, that's okay. We don't have to. Yeah. We have to agree that truth is what matters. Because, you know, that's what I mean. Debates are pointless thing. It's what truth is true that matters, doesn't it? I like debates, though. Oh, I think no. Debates, <laughs> oh, no. No, I think debates are quite good at, to help you understand other people's points of view, I Interesting. think. Interesting. Okay. Don't you think there are subjective truths or double objective truths? No. Yeah. No. Okay. The speed of light is 3.8 times 10 to the 8 metres per second. Yeah, sure, that's and objective truth. Yeah. Absolutely, but yeah. where we go when we die is also objective. Just because... Okay. X believes we go here and yeah. Y believes we go yeah, there. True, true. We will we will go to one place and there is yeah, one I truth. Meant by that was, we were say, there was a statement like murder is bad. That's right. Do you, think that's Do you believe that's, that's true? true? No, because I think it's subjective. Ooh, interesting. Like like so for example if someone was threatening to um, kill my kid and I killed killed that person yeah. out of self defense or something, I would buy a map, okay. But if I, instead I was just killing people one. Yeah. Say you both robbed a bank together, killed the guard, he's dead, stole the money, you got caught. If you were in front of the judge, this is just in terms of morality now, would the judge judge you on the good you've done or the bad you've done? Would the judge would just judge you on that one incident because that's their job? That's right, and see, the judge judges your crime, not the good things you've done. And a lot of people I speak to say, I give to charity, I'm nice to people, I'm quite selfless, it doesn't matter you're going to be judged on the bad you've done. Now, can I ask you a question? This is quite important. Do you believe objective truth is more important than what we believe? Yes. So, like, for example, if I told you I was a millionaire, but I only had 20 quid in my bank account, I wouldn't be a millionaire, would I? That wouldn't be the truth. That's true, yeah. Okay. If a murder occurred 
in the centre of Buxton, and, f <laughs> and 500 people witnessed it, would you concede that that person would be prosecuted? Yeah. Would that be sufficient evidence? Yeah. Now, we had 500 people witness the resurrection of Christ. Okay. So I believe that's quite a sizable chunk of evidence that is, there. Yeah. It's all right, isn't it? Second thing is, do you believe Julius Caesar is who you were taught he was? Oh, God, we know nothing about Julius Caesar just recently. No, he was a frightful, terrible, lying politician. Absolutely. Well, you believe what you've read, which was that he was a frightful... I, I think that we've got too few sources to make a decent... Objective. You are spot on. That comes on to my next point. So Julius Caesar, the evidence we have about him, 10 manuscripts written about 500 years after he was alive. Exactly, exactly. The New Testament, we have 5,600 manuscripts written within 100 years of Jesus' death and resurrection. And they were being made when Christians were being burned alive by Nero. Okay. Now, if that isn't sizable evidence, I don't know what is. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Does the fact that you'd go to hell today if you died concern you? No, not being a believer in hell. Interesting. Now, if you didn't believe in Surrey Prison, but you'd committed a felony and the judge was sending you there, would it, would it matter if you I believed in it or not? I don't know if there is a Surrey Prison. <laughs> <laughs> choose, one, choose one that I know, I know objectively that there you, is. You choose the prison for me. Strange, strange ways. Strange ways prison. Okay, sorry, rephrase the question. <laughs> it wouldn't matter if you believed it existed or not. It'd just be whether or not the truth was that it existed, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. If you died today, you'd go tell like you admitted. So does that concern you? Not really. Not really? Not really. Because you know like how it is with the lies? You have the white lies. I don't know about that. And the black lies. Come on, if I lie to my girlfriend, I'm, it's her birthday, and I go to pick up a, a, a present for her. I can't tell her because it's a surprise. I'm going to lie to her. I'm doing something else. It's a white lie. Let's... It's not a wrong lie, right? So with the bad deeds is as, as well, because I never stole something yeah. for real. I just stole one time when I was a kid from my dad. Thinking is just about levels. Let's try that in a court of law, judge. Let's do murder, for example. So a lot of people I see say I've only lied once, so I'm not a liar. If you murder one person, what are you? Still a murderer. You're still a murderer. Yeah, and just because your lie was just happen. just because your lie was justified by you doesn't mean that it's justified by God. He's told you not to do Fair it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Isn't it? So that's 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 a compelling argument. <laughs> <laughs> when you die, which yeah. could be today, tomorrow, or yeah. next week. You're going to meet him, like you agree, because it's great that you do believe in him. That's one hurdle overcome. What are you going to say to him when he says, listen, I sent my son as payment for you and you refused the payment. So where are you going to go? I don't know, but you're looking only at the bad sides because, OK, fair enough. I did probably lie and steal. But then again, I did other good stuff as, as well, doesn't it? Like add to the balance or something? That's really interesting. Can I give you an analogy for that? Yeah, sure. If you'd murdered someone and you were in a court of law in front of a judge, like say you murdered an old woman you down the street, really far with the <laughs> <laughs> would the judge judge you on the good you've done or the bad you've no, done? No, he'd probably judge me on the murder either. He'd judge you on the murder, wouldn't really he? That's really bad, I no, mean. That's a fair judge, isn't it? If, if someone killed your girlfriend, you wouldn't expect the judge to be nice because they gave to charity. Yeah, no. Into it, into it, okay. Now, let's get back to this question. When you get judged the day you die by God because objective truth is true, he's gonna deem you guilty. Same as me, we'd both be guilty, so would we be going to heaven or hell? Well, I think that we would go to hell, if I'm honest. If you were in front of a judge for murder and he That's said you were going thing, to Surrey, if, if he said you were going to Surrey prison, and you didn't believe in Surrey Prison, it wouldn't make a difference. It's whether or not Surrey Prison's where you're going. It's not as much as, like... I think if God is real, I don't believe... My per in bleh, I don't believe personally in it, but um, if he is real and he is judging you, he's not just like a judge. He, a judge is there to do it on that crime, right? Mm. He's not there to judge you on just, like, one instant of your life. He's there to judge you on of your life right it says in the bible just breaking one of those commandments is enough to get you thrown out of heaven so i'm afraid that's the truth can in, i say something go on, well? because i'd compare that then so say one of us went up to buckingham palace and knocked on the door and was like hey i know you don't know me queen but can i come and live here is she gonna let me live there it's the same with heaven you don't have a relationship with the creator and the god who created heaven his hope 
comparison. If, if conditional entry to Buckingham Palace was that you were a good person and that you did all of these, you know, you know, lovely things or like bad things or whatever, I think that it would be a bit more than your relationship with that person that would decide whether or not you get it. But what we're saying is that the, the condition for heaven isn't about how much good you do. Because none of us can do enough good to get to it. You compare your good to the holiness of God. You like that one, you? That's why we take the movie. Like when you have your lies, have you stolen? None of us can say that we have not broken those commandments. It's impossible. That's why we needed Christ as a saviour to take on that and pay that debt that we can't. Now, we come today in love and we care for you. We're not getting any money out of you. We're not trying to get you into a church. We're telling you the truth because you can't surely believe that the human eye made itself. Oh, but there are very primitive organisms that have sense which they can sense between light and dark. And I can, I can see that given billions of possibilities in millions of years that you might end up with something that can detect a shark coming. That's interesting. So where did the first atom come from? Uh, from stars. From st where did the stars? <laughs> You're going to see the pattern here. <laughs> and the first law of thermodynamics is energy cannot create or destroy, cannot be created or destroyed. Einstein, you know Einstein's theory of relativity, yeah. E equals mc squared. Yeah. That means that mass is equal to energy, which bottom line means mass, matter, in all its forms, cannot be created nor destroyed with exception of a miracle. It can't happen naturally. Now, you conceded to me at the start of this that this children's boot couldn't make itself. We've had scientists for years try to replicate the human eye for people who've been blind and arms for people that have lost limbs and they haven't managed. And that was with intelligent effort. You can't, you can't seriously believe that that happened on its own over random chance. How do you... Like, just saying, how do you know that that's not... I don't mean this in offence at all. No, it's How okay. do you not know that it's like a an old wives' tale? Or do you know something like that? Absolutely. Because we do, we hear stories, you know, you've probably heard the same, like, children's stories or, like, bedtime stories that we've heard. But that's just because they've been passed down or, or passed around. Was Julius Caesar a bedtime story? Because this was written about in the same fashion as him. So if we go on that logic, every single historical figure could be a bedtime story. Straight in the straight in the gladiator yeah, 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 sure. I think it means like <laughs> sure. now. I mean like yeah, I meant I meant like now. It was totally. No one was going around preaching what Julius Caesar believed in. Yeah, I see I see what you're saying. Can I give you some evidence now? Because I'm a my, I'm an apologist. I do things based on evidence. I don't believe okay. in blind faith. Okay. That's why we've got so many religions now, because evidence isn't required by most people. Yeah. So five hundred people witnessed the death, burial and resurrection of Jesus. Is that not sufficient evidence? To believe it. To believe it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. I'm going to leave you both with, with a little parting gift now. So, none of you know where you're going to go when you die. I think that's a true. You don't know. Okay. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying you're wrong. But I'm saying you don't know, do you? No. Okay. Now, you two are like two people on a plane, ready to be pushed out 25,000 feet up, and you don't know whether or not to put on the parachute because you've got doubt in your heart. Now, I'm not being funny, but the second you fall out that plane, you are going to wish that you had that parachute on. 150,000 people die every single day. You could die on your way back home. 1,786 people die in traffic accidents every single day in this country. And you could be gone and you'd be standing before God because objective truth is more important than relative truth. And he'll say to you, listen, my servants came and spoke to you today and convicted you just as they've been convicted by my law. They told you you're not a good person and that you need Christ's forgiveness. Well, and you've got to accept it. How do you then decide between all the different faiths that have come to you? Evidence. I just told you well, one person are, wrote well, the well, Quran. All right. Well, there's plenty of witnesses for Prophet Muhammad, or plenty of witnesses for 
um, Krishna or Buddha or any of these people? How do you know who to believe and who not to believe? Because none of them came back from the dead. So that's that's the criteria. That's so, yeah. If Christ didn't wasn't resurrected, I am wasting my time, okay. and I should go home right now and play on Skyrim or something like that, <laughs> because this is a waste of time. Okay. But that is the truth, and as I say, I'm based on evidence. I'm a physicist and a computer scientist. That's my background. I'm Wait, all about logic. No way! Yeah. yeah. This is awesome. You, you were like the, th the, yeah. the first law of thermodynamics. We were like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah Excellent. If, if you live a certain way, as is described by these religious books, it will help you go on your journey from away from that dark, dark place and towards whatever this, this um, glorious ideal place that you ideally want to be in is. And I think Jesus Christ there is the ideal that you're always striving towards but you can never reach if that makes sense that's my viewpoint on i like what you're saying he is what we can never reach and that's why he died for us yeah do you understand the legal implications of christ's death this is what i'll leave you with now we are like some people who've gone 90 miles an hour down the center of leak high street in the 30s zone where the cameras are we've been fined we've been given a statement by the judge we've been told that we need to pay it or we're going to go to prison and Christ came and he paid our fine. He said, listen, you don't have to go to the prison. The prison is absolutely real. Again, this isn't a matter of belief. You paid your fine, so you wouldn't have to go there. And all you have to do is say, I accept your payment. I am not good. My good deeds are as filthy rags. And my good deeds are my blood. Bless you,